Welcome back to our next topic. Today's topic is sustainable competitive advantage. Phil, I teach about sustainable competitive advantage, but I talk about price and customer service. How do you teach this concept to your students? Well, I like to differentiate between competitive advantage and what we call sustainable competitive advantage, which is the, the thing I start students out with is thinking about the fact that in any market in which you're successful, um, competitors are going to come in and try and take market share away from you. So what you want to do as a marketer is create barriers to entry which are sustainable over time. And whereas price and customer service um, have a temporary advantage, there's other things you can do to create a permanent advantage. So what do you talk about then to develop the sustainable competitive advantage? Okay, so the sources I talk about are control of supply, cost advantages through economies of scale, intellectual property and brand, location advantages, high switching costs, including developed product ecosystems, network effects, and governmental preferences. Okay, so these are the sources. Can you tell me a bit more about each one of these or some examples? Sure, let's talk about those. Okay, start with control of supply. Great example here is De Beers Diamonds. Up until in the 80s, I think it was, they controlled something like 70 to 80 percent of the diamond supply in the world. That allowed them to effectively set price and control distribution of diamonds. So that gave them an, a sustainable advantage that nobody could overcome because of their control. Economies of scale is this idea of if you're bigger, you can drive down the unit cost of your product. And so I like the idea of thinking about a big box store like Home Depot versus your corner hardware store. Home Depot can buy in bulk um, and undercut the price of the corner hardware store. And as we've seen um, over the last 20 years, a lot of the big box stores have put the small merchants in downtowns out of business over time. Brand is another sustainable competitive advantage. This is the idea people hold in their minds of your product or services. And because they're protected by um, intellectual property, they are sustainable. Intellectual property itself consists of patents, trademarks, copyrights, service marks, and trade secrets. And these are actually monopolies that are, are given by courts and governments to certain types of ideas and expression that give you the ability to keep um, a competitor out of your market. Location advantages, um, here I have an example of a mall. If I'm the Sears store that has the anchor point in this mall, then nobody else can come in and get that best spot in the mall. So I have an advantage that's permanent because nobody else can take my spot. High switching costs, the example I love to use here is uh, cellular phones. We all know what happens when you try to switch out of your cellular phone contract. You know, they take you for a couple hundred bucks in, you know, cancellation fees or whatever. Um, so they create these high switching costs that makes it difficult to move away into a new product and it creates a barrier to entry for new companies. Network effects is an interesting one. So um, I, I'm using the idea of Facebook versus Google Plus here. Um, some people might argue that Google Plus actually has superior features to Facebook, and yet most people have Facebook accounts, fewer people have Google Plus accounts, and the reason is, is because you know your friends are on Facebook. So the network is bigger, you get more value out of the network because the network is bigger. Government preferences, um, I like to think about China here. China has a policy which encourages um, government agencies and government controlled businesses to buy Chinese made automobiles. That effectively allows the Chinese companies to have um, a barrier to entry for foreign companies that gives them an advantage in the market, marketplace. So those are the ones that I usually talk about. Good, that, that helps me understand sustainable competitive advantage much better. I still use price and customer service though as competitive advantages. Aren't, can't those be sustainable competitive advantages? Well, 
Price is a short-term competitive advantage. The, the, the question you have to ask yourself is, is it a long-term advantage? Because if your price isn't um, based on lower costs, for example, your competitor can always lower their price to match yours. So they can take that advantage away from you fairly easily. Um, customer service, I kind of think of it in the same way. Um, I can be Les Schwab and I can have the idea of I have superior customer service. People run out into the parking lot to help people when they pull up. They do like free repairs on tires. They have coffee in the lobby and all that. But all of that is things that can be copied by a competitor if they want to. Now there is some brand identity there which is important, but the service itself is not sustainable absent other advantages. So let me ask this question. I can see how sustainable competitive advantage would be important to an, an Intel or really big corporations. Mm -hmm. Where I struggle a bit is with a, a small company, for example, maybe a, a local construction company in their marketing efforts. Do, do they need to be thinking about sustainable competitive advantage? Absolutely, probably even more than the Intels of the world because if you're a construction company, you, you have to think there, there are uh, not, not one or two, but 40 or 50 other construction companies that are out there hungry for their business. So how do you differentiate yourself from those other companies in such a way that you can create an advantage that keeps them from moving into your marketplace? Good, that gives me a lot to think about. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome.